Hello everyone. Okay, so if anyone can let me know if you can hear me. Okay, hopefully the voice will be a lot better today. It, it appears to be working. All right, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. So we're having another crack at this live feed. So I've got my good camera on this time. Unfortunately, I can't use the speakers on my good camera thus far not too sure why but at least the footage the image should be a lot clearer than my 20 odd year old usb camera that i was using the other day on my computer so as you can see i'm just going to look at my screen here as you can see i've got a discount code guys so the discount code as it is on your computer there, AU Camper 10. So just put that into your, into the, oh, I'm not too sure actually where you add that on there. It'll be somewhere in the checkout there, but you'll add the discount code, which will give you 10% off everything store wide on the Australian Direct website, which includes the solar panels. As I've had quite a few people ask me if I had a discount code. So I contacted Kickass and asked them how about a discount code for my viewers. And they said yes, they loved the idea and here we are. And through the night they emailed me the discount code. So I'm going to announce it right now. Now don't forget the competition for to win the 200 watt super thin solar panel is still going so i believe that ends this sunday night at midnight so go on to the kickass website and or go through to my website not my website sorry facebook uh oh, tongue twister <laughs> go to my youtube channel or go to my facebook page or go to my instagram and you'll see the link there to the competition the giveaway all you have to do then is just add your name, phone number, and email address. And then the following week, I'm not sure how many days later, uh, they, they, announce, they will draw out the winner and then they'll contact me and then I will contact you and personally congratulate you. And then someone from Kickass will call you to get your mailing address and they will post out this awesome 200 watt super thin solar panel out to you that's valued at $479 so guys so this is to go with um you would have noticed that a couple of days ago I've reached 2,000 subscribers so how cool is that I'm I'm thrilled about that so 2,000 and since then I mean that was like a day or so ago I believe I'm already up to approaching 2,030 so in the past 10 days, I've got something like 61 that signed up to my channel, which is awesome. That's the most I think I've ever had over a 10-day period. So thanks for that, guys. I can see there's a couple there on the chat just coming in. G'day, mate. How you going? Nicola, is it? I'm very good, thanks. And Steve B, g'day, Phil. How you going, Steve? Uh, it's great to see you online here. So this is just a spur of the moment uh, decision to go online. Uh, most of my online feeds are going to be like this. I don't really have a schedule I'm going to stick to, like say, I'm going to be at such a time, unless it's something really important that I'm going to announce or something like that. Or unless the uh, live videos gets a lot more popular than what they are, then I might start having these on a re more regular basis. So hopefully the footage should be a lot better than what it had been in the past because as I mentioned I'm using my very good camera now although in my computer room I need to work with some lighting here the lighting is very dull. So 
how many people we've actually got six people watching so I'm just going to make this a short uh, video just wanted to announce the 10% store wide discount that you can get through my channel all you have to do is just put into the um, where you add the promotion code on the checkout AU camper 10 and that will give you 10% on any of the products that's sold store wide through the australiandirect.com.au website with some of their awesome kick-ass products so as you're aware I've got the 300 watt solar panel and I've been putting it to the test and it's been awesome guys I've been really impressed with some of the amps that that thing has been putting through into my system I've recorded as much as 20 amps 20 amps going into my my battery which is awesome from a single solar panel that's fairly compact my it's a 300 watt so as a 300 watt it's very compact the 200 watt it's a fair bit little bit smaller so it's actually even more compact i believe its weights around nine kilos if i recall whereas the 300 watt that i've got is around about the 13 kilo mark so four kilos difference there but in my case, as you're aware, I've got the 240 volt set up in my vehicle with the Air Roaster Pro air fryer oven. I've got the coffee machine, by the way, in regards to the coffee machine. I uploaded a video last night around midnight Australian time. I actually filmed that yesterday. I edited it in one day and I got it uploaded as quick as I could. But unfortunately, by the time I filmed and edited and uploaded, it was midnight before it was up so I thought oh I might as well release it so I released it I noticed it hasn't been getting many views uh, probably because of the time that I've released it midnight so I'll have to work on that when the best times to release me videos but usually guys when my videos are ready to film I just think what's the point of just holding it back I might as well just release it bang that's it so but I'm wondering if that's a really good process to go through because when I release videos, a lot of you are getting notified about that. So if I release it at midnight, then most of you are probably going to miss that notification and end up actually missing to see the video. So what the video is on, I went down to my, one of my favourite locations locally here in Bundy, just past the Bundaberg Distillery where they make the Bundaberg rum is thanks steve I, I reckon it's set up pretty good too eh? <laughs> it is now <laughs> and we'll talk about that shortly my my big my setup but just past there, there's a place called kirby's wall on the banks of the burnt river and it's a bit bitumen road you can drive all the way there so if you're ever in the area make sure you go check it out have a nice little picnic there it's a beautiful spot and you can go fishing off the banks there too and you can pick up whiting and grunter and so on, um, depending on the time of the year as well. Uh, when I say whiting, sorry, oh, well, there is the odd whiting through there, but not, not in that area, mostly bryn. You can pick up bryn through the winter, although it's starting to get a bit late now for the bryn. The bryn usually starts when we have our show weekends, which is around about late, late May, June. And then the bryn comes in on the bite and you can catch brim off that Kirby's wall along there so it's a bit of a, a rock wall because they we got the hummock which used to be a volcano so there's a few rocks around the area here so but it's a beautiful spot so if you can have a look at that video that I released last night and it's on my uh, little Nespresso Crea Tista Pro and it's an awesome coffee machine so it's fully automatic we won't need to talk too much about it right now because I think just about everything that you'll need to know about it is in that video. That video went for a long time, man. By the time I got back home, I didn't realise I had over an hour of footage and I managed to cut it back down to, I think it cut down to 40 minutes. So hopefully that's not too long for you guys. But there is a lot of good information in there, I think so. Particularly for you guys that always say, oh, a pod machine, yeah, nah, they're, they're no good. You, you, you can never get a good coffee out of fresh beans. And yeah, true, 
But mind you, the pod machines, if you look around, there are some really good coffee uh, brands out there that make them in the pods. But guys, watch that video. And I've actually been able to use my fresh coffee beans, so grind at home, through re reusable pods. They're stainless steel. There are many different brands out there. Some of the good ones, I believe one is called uh, Blue Cap, I think. I've heard that one's been getting some really rave reviews, so I might actually uh, order that one and give it a go. It'll give me more content for my YouTube channel as well. And the one I've got, the one I've chosen to use, it's called the Seal Pod. So check it out. And you can use your own coffee beans, fresh coffee beans. You can purchase them whether they're grind. So you, you kind of grind them at a fine, medium fine. I grind mine more so fine. And the coffees, I mean, they taste just as good. In fact, better than most cafes that I've been to. Overland Turtle, how you going? Just show your app, yep. Yeah, I've just only been on for uh, not very long, uh, 11 minutes to be exact. And basically it came on here to announce a, a discount code through the Australian Direct website for all their products. So it's a store-wide discount code which gives you 10% off. So all you have to do is just put in that code that you see on the screen and the AU Camper 10. Add that into wherever you put the promotion codes in somewhere in the checkout there when you go to purchase the items and get 10% off including the solar panels. So short and long back, black, strong, yes. I use the pod machine for two coffees a day, excellent Nespresso. Yeah, Nespresso, really good. Have you tried the Nespresso brand? coffee uh, pods they are really nice but they're like 80 cents plus and you can't just walk into a store and just purchase them so you've got to purchase them on mail order and then you've got to purchase a minimum amount to get free shipping as well which is quite a fair bit so I was considering doing that but then I started sitting down looking how you know the amount of pods that I've been going through and I think wow if I start buying this Nespresso it's going to end up costing a few dollars. So I did some research and I found out that a lot of people have bought out these reusable pods and, and also in regards to that a lot of these pods it takes I've read that it takes 500 years before it breaks down. So a lot of them just get thrown and there's something like seven, I don't know if it's true, but I did a little bit of research on it and I'm going to do a video on this in regards just on the these pods for your coffee machine and I read there's something like seven million pods per week in Australia alone are thrown away that takes 500 years before they dissolve apparently word going around so i think using the reusable pods is the way to go and plus you're going to save money later on and plus you get to choose which coffee you want and i mean i've worked out the maths i think it works out to something like if you keep using particularly the nespresso something like a kilo of nespresso coffee used in those pods it's something like 240 or $300. I can't remember. I did work it out. Whereas you can go uptown and buy really good coffee for like $50, $60 for that kilo. Uh, that is really fresh. And just grind it yourself. Or get them to grind it for you. And then reuse these. Re, just use these resealable pods. But if you go in the video. I uploaded a video last night on the Creatista Pro. The Nespresso Creatista Pro and that's the coffee machine that I chose to use. I don't like uh, just the coffee as coffee such on it on its own. I like coffee with milk so I always have cappuccinos or lattes or a new one I found out that I didn't even know existed and it's actually in the menu of this Creatista Pro is a latte macchiato. <laughs> I've got a video on that as well, making the latte macchiato about about a week or two ago, if you have a look at that. But I posted a video last night, 
it goes for 40 minutes so it is long but there's a lot of content there and I actually talk about these reusable pods and show you the difference on using them so yeah no it's it's awesome I'm sorry gotta go mate I'll watch your pod video tonight cheers yeah guys that's the thing I mean I'm live now but this is going to be this is going to be a video that will stay on my channel so those who aren't able to watch it live now will be able to watch it later um, having a lunch break add turn the laptop on cool Howdy, pouring down here in Newey. Oh, I wish it would rain here. We had a very little bit of shower. Uh, probably about three hours south of me, I heard that they had 70 mils of rain overnight. It is so dry where I'm living right now. Um, about an hour ago, we had uh, just a few bits of rain, not enough to wet anything. And that's all we've had so far. Apparently forecast was supposed to get between an inch and two inch uh, But doesn't look that way maybe towards the end of the week So Yeah, so how many people we got here? I oh, only got four people on <laughs> Thank you for you four people that are on my channel. Thanks <laughs> I'm hopeful these live feeds will get a lot more popular I know this is not the best time of the day to have a live feed <laughs> and it's not announced it's just out of the blue so I need to start if I'm going to do a live feed I should try to do them on weekends or at night time so that you guys are able to watch but this will be re-uploaded to my YouTube channel so be able to watch it later <laughs> So, unfortunately, if there was more people on, well, I don't know. If any of you guys want to, um, have got any questions in regard to my setup. I mean, someone, I don't know, who was it? Someone asked about my setup here. Uh, your rig is nice, Steve B. I don't know if you're still online here. I totally agree. I mean, a really good example of my setup is recently when I went down to when I when I say recently this is probably about five six months ago now I went down to the sunny coast and I got away late one day I went down there to go camping because I wanted to do some shopping down Brisbane so I camped at a place up near uh, Caboolture so I drove there and I stopped and had some and dinner was about half past four and I thought well I might as well just grab some dinner now so I stopped at a roadside cafe uh, somewhere in Caboolture there and had had a meal and then I went up to my campground where I'm camping and as I got there I pulled up and I could see and I can look and see this really dark cloud was coming over from the southeast and it was a wicked storm and it was black as so I quickly got out the vehicle I put the awning out I pressed the button I put my electric rooftop tent up grabbed the ladder out my car hooked it on grabbed the fold-up chair put the chair underneath opened the door grab a drink sat down and it just pissed down raining it only took me a couple of minutes to do all that only a couple of minutes so by the time I arrived there within two minutes I was sitting down having a drink and that's when it just started pissing down rain and everything was dry as I had no problems at all so as you've seen I've got the ostrich wing awning and which is very quick to set up particularly in combination with those tough touring brackets that are manufactured here in Australia so they're an Australian product designed in Australia made in Australia they're based down in Victoria tough touring check out their website they make really good attachment points for onto your roof racks for all the different types of awnings and they're very strong and they're very important to have a very strong connection point to your vehicle when you're using freestanding awnings such as the ostrich wing that I've got 
So, and in that case, the ostrich wing does have legs that fold down. So I actually did put the legs down and hammered them out. And there's only three legs. So they drop down. I quickly grabbed some Oztent guy lines, grabbed my pegs, whack three pegs in and pump. And it, you can actually include that. I also had all that done. So it's basically set up in a couple of minutes. That's how quick. My, it's quicker than the caravan. It's quicker than the caravan. And now they've got the 240 volt system as well. So, event, example, if I, these jumbo, frozen jumbo sausage rolls, you can get at Coles. If I wanted to have a quick meal then, I could have just whacked that in the air fryer. 17 minutes later, it's cooked. And it comes out really nice and crispy. Whereas with a one of those travel buddies, which I do have, uh, cook one of those from frozen takes an hour and a half and even then it's not ideal to my liking I usually let it go to close to two hours so I usually say any frozen food it usually you're looking at close to two hours particularly a pie two hours so so with this air fryer what takes used to take two hours can now take 15 17 minutes and I can bake in it, I can make cakes, I can make fresh bread, so I can it's even got a rotor there, rotor is so I'm not sure how you, so it's, a, it's like a spit that turns around, and I can fit a whole chicken inside it. I can fit a whole chicken in there, and it does an awesome job. Roast as well, I can cook a whole roast meal in there. So, and in fact, I've been so impressed with it, I use it at home, I've been using it at home, so it's going to be awesome. I mean, our next electricity bill is going to be so low <laughs> because I hardly ever use the oven or the stove at home. I've now realized these air fryers, I had no, I, I mean, I've got air fryers, you know, the way I, those ones for the chips, you know, with the bag, you know, the drawer that puts out and you whack your fries in there and you cook your fries. And that's all I ever used them for. I've got them like this. But you can get these air fryer ovens, and the ones I've got is called an Air Roaster Pro. And I'm quite impressed on how well it cooks. I even do all my toasts in there. It only takes four minutes to toast. And there's no warm-up time, guys. You turn it on and bang, the heat just just instant. It's right there. Well, I can run that inside my four-wheel drive. So I can use that when I go camping. So let's have a look. Uh, gee, that Nespresso Crea Tester Pro was as nearly as putting in it in an intercooler in the BT50. Gee, that Nespresso Crea Tester Pro was is nearly as putting in a intercooler in the BT50. I don't know what do you mean. Is it nearly as exciting as putting an intercooler for the BT50? <laughs> Depends. I think that's how I got that. Depends how much you like your coffee. I'm. I'm not a coffee fanatic as such, but when I I don't need to have coffees every day. But when I do want a coffee, I want a nice coffee, and it's got to be nice and strong. Particularly if you're traveling on the road, nice strong coffee on the side of the road really boosts your energy up if you're starting to feel a little bit tired and keeps you going for, you know, a couple of hours until you stop again. So I, I think they're perfect like that. So this thing says, what have we got? Four people watching now. <laughs> so four people. Actually, a buddy of mine, Stephen's just message me i don't finish work till 3 p.m today i sent him a message to let him know that i want to test this out to see how it works um but obviously it seems to be working fine so so which is great so i don't know if there's anyone's got any questions uh let me bring back the chat here so there is about Unfortunately, I'm using all these graphics here, guys, going through another software. So what it does is that it does cause a 30-second delay. 
So whatever you type in the chat, I don't get it till I don't see it till thirty seconds after you type it in. Basically, and it's the same here. So if you ask a question, it takes. I don't answer it straight away. You know why? Because there's there is a bit of a delay. There's another software I'm going to trial out and trying to bet it's really if you think this one's advanced and this one's tricky you should try the other one. Oh my gosh. It's, oh, it's blowing your mind away how technical it is. It took me like a couple of days just to figure out just to get the webcam to work on it. And I managed to do that. So I'm gonna muck around with that and see how I go. So guys, yeah, definitely check out that new video I put up last night. It's, um, I thought it would be a hit video. I thought it would get a lot of views. Um, but for the first day, sort of, as it being posted, it's my least video that people are watching after one day, which kind of surprised me. Um, so maybe these coffee videos. I mean, I've done coffee videos in the past, not for a while now. And I've got some that have got something like 5,000 views. I mean, they might even be up over 6,000 views by now. Um, so hopefully this one will pick up a little bit more. So otherwise, I mean, I've got a, some plans. I want to go away camping at a place called Paradise lost on the dam or something like that again it's on the banks of the burnet river um it's not too far from where i live probably 40 45 minutes drive um like to go there before the weather gets too hot and before the storms and season really settles in uh, apart from that and then once the weather starts warming up a bit most of my camping then will be based along the coastline just on the beach nearby within 20 minutes drive away where I live at a place called Kinkuna which is a remote camping zone in the Barham National Parks uh, so the Kinkuna section is awesome through there it's very nice you have to be fully self-sufficient. Uh, ideally, bring your own toilet, bring your shower, bring water. There's no fresh water, nothing like that there. Uh, but it's beautiful camping right on the beach. So that's a remote zone called Kinkuna. Uh, it's soft at times. It depends on the conditions and how many vehicles went through. If you don't like... Hi Phil, I'm on Smoko. Hey, how you going Steve? <laughs> yeah, I've just been on live here for just coming on the half an hour now. Uh, just about to log off shortly. Just announced the 10% uh, uh, store-wide discount coupon that I've got. I couldn't think what this called, discount coupon, which is the AU Camper 10. So hopefully the video is coming through pretty good. I'm using my really good Sony camera. I figured out how to connect it to my computer. Although I have not figured out and I don't think I can use the my mics, my Rode mics. I don't know how to use my Rode mics through my computer. I might have to just plug the RCA plug directly into the input on the computer and use that. I was hoping it will go through the USB cable that's plugged into my computer as well. So the mic is just going through this cheap, wow that's interesting, I mean I've got this cheap like 20-25 year old camera here with the mic built in and yet it's picking me up but my U-Butte camera here with all the whiz, big bang, everything latest, all the best, you know, professional mics and all that, it won't pick it up. <laughs> Figure that one out. Figure that out. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. Looks fantastic. Oh, that's good. So it's got the real good lens on it as well. So it's in low light here, so it should be able to handle the low light a lot better as well. So, yep. 
So Kickass got back to me overnight. And yesterday sent me a, a message as I sent them a message. I've got a lot of folks asking for discount codes. How about discount code? So here we go. I got an email from not long ago and I've got the 10% off store wide for all my viewers. So how cool was that guys? I don't know how long that code's gonna run. It's got no mention any time frame as well. And also remember guys, as I mentioned before, that when the Kickass 200 watt super thing solar panel valued at $479, that prize giveaway is still ongoing. That will not end to, I believe, Sunday at midnight. So this Sunday at midnight. So you've got until this Sunday at midnight to get your entries in for that 200 watt portable lightweight solar panel that you see there and these get these solar panels are awesome guys they're waterproof so you can have them out in the weather i believe i think i read that there somewhere so steve whether you had yours out in the rain out in the weather yet um let me know if it survived that <laughs> i'm sure it does and yeah i think they're great I've got one similar to that, but I've got the 300 watt version as well. So, um, because of my 240 volt system. So, yeah, no, it's good. Hey guys, look at that. I've got 10, actually got 10 people watching now. Hey, that's cool. Up until last time I checked, there was only about four of us here. But now, now there's 10. So, that's not too bad for a, what is it, Tuesday? Two o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. Most people will be out there working and so on. So, as I mentioned before, uh, make sure you check out my latest video that was uploaded. Then that video I uploaded last night, I did that in a whole day. That was filmed yesterday morning. I left home here about 9 o'clock. I went down and I, by the time I set up and did the filming, it was about 12 o'clock I finished there. And then I left there, got back home at 12.30. I had my lunch, quick lunch, and then again cooked up in my air fryer oven in the back of the vehicle <laughs> i've been cooking most of my meals in there and then i got into editing and i finished editing it took me about four or five hours just solid editing i had that done and then i had to render it and upload and guys i film everything in 4k so this uh, by the time i got home i had over an hour of footage so I dropped that down to 40 minutes. I couldn't really get any more less than that because I think there's a lot of good information there. Particularly the section on your reusable pods. Which I'm going to do a video on that one day. On the reuse of the benefits of using the reusable pods. I think it will make an awesome video so I might work on that now. Oh, 3 p.m., that's right. You guys are on the funny time, eh? I call it funny time. <laughs> Which is a pain because it means we don't get the news live. There's always an hour delayed telecast. Queensland is behind. <laughs> oh, you guys are just off in fairyland. You're off future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 3 p.m. in New South Wales. You know, I reckon Queensland should have daylight savings time. Um, I know there was a referendum. I can remember they had a, a Queensland-wide vote back in about the 80s when we were on the farm. And everyone had to vote for it. And it was anonymously a huge no. Um, so they were trying to introduce daylight savings daylight savings then the problem for us why it wouldn't have worked for us is because we're on the farm we're small crop farmers and you don't work on a watch okay you work on daylight we didn't even wear watches you don't work on a watch as soon as it's daylight or even on dark you're up early in the morning you're out picking out in the field as the sun's coming up and then we had to get our produce picked and packed before 3 p.m. that afternoon for the truck 
to come in, pick up our produce, and then to freight it down to Brisbane overnight or into Sydney, and the next day it'll be out in the you know, out in the shops, very fresh, out to the restaurants, very fresh. The day after. Problem is, if we had daylight savings here, that would mean then, in reality, trucks would turn up to pick up their produce at 2 p.m. We'll lose an hour in that day and we wouldn't be able to do it. We would not be able, we would not be able to get the produce picked unless we started an hour early in the day and give all our workers torches to pick. But that is just absolutely crazy. So it meant we had one hour less time in the day and honestly, guys, sometimes we struggled to make it by 3 p.m. before those trucks turned up. That's what it was like back then. I don't know what it's like today now, whether they give you extra time or not. I've got no idea. But you had a cutoff time of 3 p.m. Whatever you had picked and packed by then, the trucks will take and take it away. And quite often, the produce, some of the produce we, we picked, we grown, it's very, very important important that it actually leaves that day and gets sold down at the markets because they have to be fresh. Yeah. No worries. Watto 24. Watto is it? That's a cool name. Love it. <laughs> Gotta go back to work for 45 minutes. Wow. So you had smoke go and then you worked for 45 minutes. <laughs> the smoke go. <laughs> I probably would have just worked through Smoko and get home early and have a, have lunch when you get home or something. <laughs> no worries. So the code, that's why I've made this live feed to get this code out there. How long we're on for now? 37 minutes. So we've got eight viewers. Oh, two cop dropped there. Oh, we've got another one. Nine. Oh, sweet. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. I don't know if any of you guys follow Mr. Baccaroni. He's been doing quite a few live videos of late. And I notice when he goes on these live videos, he gets like two, three hundred. I cannot imagine what it must be like trying to keep up with all the comments with two, three hundred people on there watching your live feed. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> toes crossed. One day I might reach those milestones. <laughs> I'm trying. I'd love to be able to jump on here and have like... I'm excited just having 10. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, I've got nine now. I had not I had 10 before. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, got to go back to work. Thanks for the code. Excellent. Yeah, no, no worries. No, the code was not a problem. I, I sent them. I had quite a few people ask me for the code. And if I had a discount code. So I sent Kickass an email a few a few days, number days back now. And they got back to me yesterday with this code. So I thought, I did announce it. I think during the night or yesterday, I put it on my Facebook page, by the way, guys. I now have a Facebook page just dedicated to go with my YouTube channel under the same name, Phil's 4x4 Touring and Equipment. And I've also got a Instagram page as well under the same name, Phil's 4x4 Touring and Equipment as well. So I've got an Insta Instagram, I've had that one for a while. Uh, the Facebook page under the same name, I've started that one only a couple of weeks ago. And of course, I've got my YouTube channel, which you, some of you'd be surprised. I actually started this YouTube channel back in 2008. 2008, when I started my YouTube, cha YouTube channel. But I never took YouTube seriously, well, more seriously, until about a year ago. I thought, well, I'm going to give it a crack. And see if I can maybe, you know, get some more. In fact, 
when I gave it a crack a year ago, I gave myself a timeline. I said, right, I'm going to give myself, I think I had something like 200 members in that time. I hardly ever posted anything on my YouTube channel. I had lots of bits of dabbly things, you know, a bit of magic and a bit of radio controlled flying helicopters. Uh, bushwalking, I've had some bushwalking. I used to do a lot of ultra lightweight long distance bushwalks. So there's a few videos. If you go back about seven, eight years on my YouTube channel, you'll see some videos of me walking around the Blue Mountains, the Royal National Parks, etc. I think there's some at the Gold Coast hinterland as well. Um, I can't recall what others I've got there. There's some videos there where I'm doing ultra lightweight um, baking. I've always been into baking, even when I've got such little packs on me back going along bushwalking. I still like to bake my little breads and so on and little cakes and scones. So I, I made up this ultra lightweight little backpacking oven type thing and it's quite intriguing if you go back you'll see there's some videos on that as well um and you got to go back about seven eight years or even probably up to ten years to see that um so yeah when's the merchandise coming out like buck yeah yeah i thought i'd probably hold off for the merchandise until i'm more popular well i think i'm slowly getting there i mean i hit 2000 a couple of days ago and it's quite amazing since then i've like picked up like another 20 or 25 or 30 subscribers i mean in the past just over a week i picked up something like 61 subscribers which is the the most i've ever picked up in a one week period ever since i started my youtube channel back in 2008 so it's gotten me quite excited. <laughs> I like to see that. I mean, the more popular my channel's going to be, the more effort I'm going to put into these videos, as I have been of late with the filming and the reviews and more thorough. I mean, just watch the one on the Creatista Pro that I uploaded last night, which is surprising. It's not getting many views. I thought it would be a hit. Um, but it does go for 40 minutes, but um, it's I think it's worth the while watching if you into your coffees uh, Check that video out. There's some tips on your pods as well using pods in that video as well, so um, So yeah, I've been thinking about To be honest, I've been thinking about merchandise for a little while now so I don't know when, but one day I'm going to come out with some, whether it be caps, uh, stubby holders, probably a stubby holder. I wouldn't mind doing some caps. Not many people seem to be doing merchandises with caps. So I'm going to look into some caps. And um, depending how much they are, uh, get some sub stubby holders. And then maybe later on, I um, wouldn't mind doing some shirts. We'll see see what happens. But I'll start out with either caps and, or, and maybe stickers. Stickers are probably a good thing to probably start out with first. As Stephen and any from FJ Camping and Touring, they just put out um, stickers. And in fact, I just got uh, about half past four yesterday afternoon, the mailman rocked up. I don't think he's ever rocked up so late before. So there must be a lot of mail getting around. I suppose it's starting to get closer to Christmas now. So I can imagine the mail system is probably going to falter big time uh, up until Christmas. Uh, so even at this early stage. And finally, um, a couple of stickers. He sent me up some stickers and they arrived yesterday afternoon and they looked awesome. So I'm not too sure who he got them done through but I'll have to ask Stephen and find out and um, got to do up a bit of a logo update it I mean I do have one made uh, but I've got to update the uh, rooftop tent because as you've know I've been through three rooftop tents now I've got to go through three rooftop tents before I found the best one that's suitable for me 
like there's the uh, what do you call the um, uh, the big one that fold out what do you call those geez I can't even eye camper I've owned the eye camper for a while and that's awesome and that was quick to set up and it was huge probably too big for me I mean you get lost inside that it was like a king size bed in there and most of the time I camp on me I don't know how one that camps with me and and I just camp on me own and but it's been brilliant but the bedding oh my gosh the bedding it's like a torture machine it is terrible and then I had a loan of the Drifter Wildlands rooftop tent and yeah it was it was it was good it was okay but not not for me not for me that one there um, I I found it a little bit hard to set up because I find that bar that folds out and you got to press up man that thing the last time I did that I end up in bed for three days it just stuffed me back up just trying to push that the one I had the materials really really tight and you could not get that thing locked in and um, yeah so I drove down to Brisbane dropped it off there said I don't want it anymore <laughs> and then I I picked up a really good deal uh, through Bundatec because I actually approached them four weeks beforehand and spoke to them while I was down the Gold Coast and spoke to the distributor there and um, we then worked out a deal and he gave me a really good deal so I went for it and guys it is the best by far rooftop tent the mattress in it is more comfortable than my own bed so I get the best sleep inside it takes 20 seconds to set up I don't have to spend any extra money on it like all the other rooftop tents you get them and if you want power then you've got to pay, spend money to put the power in so you can charge your devices your you know whatever your mobile phones your computer your, your um, run a you know 12 volt little blank blanket thing warmer blanket whatever they call electric blanket that's 12 volt ones uh, charge your iPads and that you got to then pay money or find a way to wire that in lights as well fans as well you buy a Bundatec Bundu top and it comes with all of that all included and plus you can fit all your bedding in there so you don't need to you don't even need to make your bed every day you can have your bed made up in there so when you pull up a camp you push a button it only takes 20 seconds to come up the saw it's got like a boat winch motor inside it and it's got this elaborate pulley system it's quite intriguing I, I can't work out how this I wouldn't even try to think how the thing system works but it's got like a pulley system and there's big arms don't like aluminium arms that comes up that lifts the roofs up and then it stops once it's at the right tension it stops automatically and then um, you just Climb in there and go to bed. No bed to make up. No mattresses you have to change. And not just that, it's pre-wired for solar as well. So they've already got the solar pre-wired. So you can got a nice flat top on the roof. So you go and whack a nice big decent size anywhere. 300, even you can squeeze 400 watt household high voltage solar panel on the top. Screw that down. And then plug it in that's it because it's already pre-wired plug it in and there's your power I would love to do that but I can't do it because I cannot put any more weight on top of my vehicle I'm just under the limit that I'm allowed right now so if I put a 
a solar panel on the top, then I'm over what I'm allowed to carry on top of my vehicle. So I cannot do that. So hence why I've got the solar blankets and the generator. To be honest, guys, some of you are going to be probably surprised about this. If I had a choice and I only took one, a solar panel or generator, I'll take my generator. For example, the other day I had it, I um, had my fridge, I leave my fridge, I've got a 75 litre fridge freezer, the left zone runs the freezer, right zone that runs the fridge, it's on 24 hours a day, never gets turned off, and it's basically been like that for the last nearly, just over two years, and but it's, well, I've got to do a two year review on that fridge as well, that I haven't um, finished yet just gathering data and that together so any day now um, I'll get it there and do a video on on that fridge and uh, so it's on all the time so from one day it was from about 11 11 o'clock through to about oh, I don't know it was 21 and a half hours anyway it had no power in and the battery got down to, what was it, 60% or something? 70%, something in between there. So I grabbed my generator, I plugged my generator in, within one hour it was fully charged. And while that was charging, I actually cooked lunch in it. I was using some of that power of the generator to cook my meal in the air fryer oven as well. But it only took an hour to get my battery about 60%, I think it was, yeah, I think it was 60%, back up to 100% one hour. And I've got the Honda generator, so they are very quiet. So, I, I had a choice, I much prefer to take that than a solar panel. Uh, but some places you need a solar panel. Uh, you're only a few years away from ASPW, right? at it just started watching his channel you got any plans for it? oh andrea st pierre white oh goodness i don't know if i will ever catch up i don't think i will ever be anything like andrea st pierre white as pop when i say like him as popular as andrew i think he's a brilliant guy i'm actually one of his patrons i pay him a monthly fee and um, it's good to be a patron because you'll get the videos a bit earlier, about a week earlier than what you guys get. But occasionally we get extra videos as well. And if you chat, type to him, he actually handles, answers you back. So you actually can communicate with him, depending how busy he is, through Patreon. Um, and he's... He's a really smart guy. I agree a lot what he's saying. I'm super, super excited about this series of videos he's building, he's doing now with this new building, particularly in going to induction cooking, particularly going to that MultiPlus. Very similar system that I'm running myself. And in fact, I actually, after I watched those series, I've actually sent him about four or five messages telling him about my system, telling him I'm doing all he's doing, but I'm doing it a lot lighter weight, and I've actually even got an air fryer as well. Like he's got a multi-plus that's 20 kilos, I'm using one that's 13 kilos that's doing the job. But he, I've offered to even, I send him, send me your email address and I'll send you the link to my portal, the Victron portal, so you can go on there and you can see, I'm using it every day. I'm cooking at home. I'm testing it every day as if I'm camping. So you can go on there and you can check over a 24-hour period, going back as far as six months. But my, I've only had the system for about two months. So going back two months now. You could go on there any day, any time of the day and see what my fridge is consuming during that one hour. See what my solar panels put in, how many watts, how many watt power, how many voltages put in. At any moment during the day over the last six month period uh, same as the inverter 
um, a battery temperature, um, everything. It's got all those kind of details. And um, he hasn't got back to me yet, so I don't know whether he's out and about or not, but that's fine. If he gets back to me and he wants the link, he can have a look at it. I'm sure if he got grabbed access to that link, it'll help him with his decisions and so on. And I'm doing all this with 100, the iTech World 120X battery. I'm getting away with just that one battery. I found I haven't had to get two batteries. The only, and I knew, well, I did a lot of research in this, and I knew that for what I'm using, only the one battery is all I'd need. But I've always going to get the second one, iTech World 120X battery. I've always planned to. And the reason why I always planned to is so that I can double the charge rate I can put in over a single battery. And I can also um, double the discharge rate. Okay. But I found out that's not the case. I've had a Victron technician told me recently when I went to visit them that um, with that particular battery if you have two in parallel it does not mean you can double your charge rate you're still limited to that between 20 to 50 it does it means you cannot double your discharge rate you're still limited to they say continuous discharge rate of 150 and which is what I need that's the minimum I need minimum that because of what I'm running in my system there so but interesting the other day I was cooking up some fries when I was out at my buddy's mate Keith helping him out with his camper trailer doing some rewiring the um, 12 volt system in there we basically had to rewire the whole thing and um, and put a new setup in there so we did that and I helped him do all that and um, yeah so In effect, really, I think it's a limit of the BMS that's built into the iTech World batteries. From what I understand, even if you parallel more than one together, they still, you could parallel up, I think it's almost endless how many you can parallel together. I think your limit on in series, you can only in series plug two together, which gives you 24 volts, which is an advantage in some ways over 12 volt um, but I chose to stick to 12 volt because everything I had so much that's on there it's already 12 volt um, so yes yeah, so it means so it's really what benefits give me it's really not giving me any benefits to go for an extra battery so I think I'm going to eventually ditch the iTech world battery for that reason so I'm not going to buy a second in, a second one in parallel and together so I'm probably going to do two things I'm either going to build my own battery system lithium battery system that I'm looking into or I'm going to get the DCS 200 amp uh, battery which is an awesome battery um, which has got a high discharge rate and you can charge it very fast it can you can get a lot out of it um, and the BMS doesn't limit it. Um, so, yeah. So that's what I've been told. That's what I've been told, guys, with these iTech World 120X batteries. Is that the BMS is still limiting. If you parallel more than one together, it doesn't mean you can increase the discharge rate or increase your charge rate. You're still limited to those specs. Whether that's true, I don't know. But hey, this is a Victron. This is a Victron tech that told me this, so you'd think he would know, guys. And he says I've come by those batteries, and that's what he's telling me. So, yeah. 
So why we've got a second amp, second battery to include increase, you know, those two features? It's not going to happen. It's pointless me going to go buy another one then. I don't really need that extra capacity because I've got a DC DC charger. I've got that little generator if I need to. I've got those solar panels. Okay, I've got those high voltage solar panels that I can use. So yeah, it'll be nice to have 200 amps, sure. 200 plus, it would be nice. But I'm also trying to keep that weight down as much as possible. But I've got no problems I can afford to put out. In fact, if I build my own system, it'll be 200 plus. It'll probably be anywhere between 200, maybe even as much as 400 amps. I might be able to build a system of 400 amps that weighs not much more than a DCS 200 amps. I'm looking into the different cells, guys. I'm looking into... And if I build one, it'll have a discharge rate, continuous discharge rate of 200 amps, and I'll be able to charge it at probably 100, 150 amps rate as well. Um, so, and it's going to be shitloads cheaper if I build me, me own one as well. So, have you asked iTech World? No, no, not really. I kind of trust what the Victron tech, tech guy told me. Um, in fact, guys, I'm going to be doing a video with them one day with Victron. And I'm going to one of their big, huge distributors in the area. I'm going to do a video and we're going to walk through and show you some of the Victron gear they've got and some of the work that they're doing. I've actually spoken to them about it and they're happy to do it. Um, so they're going to have one of their guys walk around with me and we're going to do a bit of a walk around. Uh, these guys have got some of these real big uh, camper vans they're setting up, these big touring mansion homes and all that and some of the gear they're putting in there. So we're going to have a bit of a walk around and, and I think that's going to be a really good video. So we've just got to organise the time to do that. And so that'll be a video that's going to come up in the future. But... No, I haven't asked iTech World um, whether that's true. But Victron Tech, guys, you think they'd know, eh? Because he told me out of the blue, he asked me what batteries he got. And I told him, he said, ah, okay. He said, straight away, he told me, if you plan to get a second one, I said, yes. He said, just be aware that when you get a second one, doesn't mean that you'll be able to double the discharge rate or double the charge rate. That BMS on that is still limited to that 50 amp charge rate. Whether you've got one, two, three, four, five, whatever parallel together, the BMS cannot handle any more than that, he told me. So... You'd think he'd know. <laughs> so, yeah. And and going to that battery as well. Actually, the other day, I was cooking up, like I mentioned, this right. That's what I was coming to, and I went to a different subject. I was out my mate, my face, Keith, setting up his camper van, changing the 12-volt system in it, because his camper van is from China, and you should have seen the 12 volt system that's built into it. It was a fire hazard, so we practically had to rip everything out and renew it all. So I helped him do that. And it's great now. Perfect. But geez, that was a big job to do. But I enjoyed it. I love doing it. I love helping people out like that. Particularly me mates. Um, so we worked on that over a three, four day, five day period. Something full hours each day and we had it done and it's great now um, yeah so I mean what's the time now guys oh we've still got nine people on that's cool so oh well I think my mum wants me to do something for her so um, unless you guys just give wait guys just give me a second
Give me about 20 seconds. I'm going to grab a drink and I'll come back, eh? Uh, back it's a it's a warm day today <laughs> all right I bought a solar king for my cub camper any view on that don't know never come by him before what's solar king is that one of those king brand ones Solar King. Let me have a. Let me have a quick. The Solar King. Is that the lithium batteries? Oh, yes, yeah, Solar King. Lithium batteries. I think they're the ones you're talking about. Yeah, no, I've heard good things about them. I don't know what their discharge rate is. Let me have a look at the specs. You've got to be very careful. If you want to run something like a coffee machine or an air fryer, you need something that's got high discharge rate and ideally a fast charge rate. But your discharge rate is the most important. But be wary. A lot of them give a discharge rate, but they give you the rate of the peak which is like for one, two, three seconds or whatever. You need to get the specs for the continuous discharge rate that they can handle. And it looks like the Solar Kings, the 100 amp hour lithium iron Solar King batteries, maximum discharge rate 1C. So 1C that means 100 amps. So you've got a maximum discharge rate of 100 amps. You got a maximum three second pulse, 150 amps. So 150 amps can handle that for maximum only three three seconds. But maximum continuous is 100 amps. So which is a little low. It's a little low. And and be fairness, most of the 100 amp hour batteries are rated at 100 amps. So, that's the only thing. So, if you want to whack an induction cooktop on it, um, you're going to have problems. Even a coffee machine, you'll have problems running the coffee machine off it. Now, I don't know what happens when you put them in parallel. It says can be connected in series or parallel. I don't know what the BMS is like in these when you connect them in parallel, whether that will double that so if you run in parallel two batteries hopefully that means you'll get a discharge rate of 200 amps but that's not always the case you need to contact them to verify if that is the case so but I've heard good things about these solar kings I know there's a guy down in Victoria and he's got this cool YouTube channel and he's actually a 12 volt expert installer and it's his own business and he goes around and sets up um, full and he uses a lot of Victron gear similar to my setup he does it similar to my setup in my vehicle using Victron gear and he uses these Solar Kings so that's a handy channel and he, he does tutorial videos on there as well. Tell you what, they're not a bad price. They're on special. I'm just having a look here now. There's some place here called 
trailercamperaustralia.com.au are selling these Solar King 100 amp hour lithium batteries for $575. Isn't that cheap? <laughs> that is cheaper. That's even cheaper than the iTech World ones. But this bear in mind, you won't be able to run an induction cooktop off a single one of that. And I don't even know if you still be able to run an induction cooktop if you parallel them together, depending on the BMS. BMS is very, the battery management system is very important. Um, maximum in series voltage 30.4, so the maximum, so that's telling me if you want to go in the series, the maximum you can do is 24 volts. Um, but gee, it's not a bad price though. But unfortunately, it won't do what I'm doing though. It's not limited too much. And most of them are like that. So, let me catch up. Uh, yep, yeah, I recall 100 amp hour. That's true. Yep, it is 100 amp hour. Hey, Doc038, how you going? <laughs> My plan was to parallel 2x150. It's here in the ACT. Ah, that guy, yes, the guy that you, or that shop that you're referring to. Geez, 575, isn't that cheap, guys? 575 for a lithium and the Solar King, and I've heard they're pretty good, but like I said, they're limited. Their discharge rate is limited, and I'd imagine the charge rate would be limited as well to probably 50 amps, but there's nothing wrong with that. 50 amps is still good. I don't know, where does it say? Um, it's got an operating temperature range between minus 20 to plus 60. So, those iTech World 120X have got some really good specs, guys. And you, when you, you check them out, they're actually, they're, they're not bad. Single bat I'm pushing that single one battery there, and it's, it's doing what I want to do here. Except when I cooked some fries and it wasn't a very hot day. So these iTech World, let's bring up the specs on it. iTech World 120X. It's got a continuous discharge rate of 150 amps. Now not all the iTech Worlds have that. Most of these have got a lot of new batteries coming in now. So don't get confused with these new ones. A lot of these new ones are similar specs to that Solar King one I just saw where they're maximum 100 amps. So you, you will not be able to run a, an inverter or, or anything like that off it, okay? Um, whereas with the iTech 120X you can because of the specs. And um, so which is, I'm just looking for it. And it will actually, the BMS operational temperature range is up to 80 degrees Celsius. So getting back to when I was cooking those fries the other day at a Keith's place, and I was going for about 15 minutes, and I didn't have the solar panel. Actually, I did have the solar panels plugged in because if I, if I use the air fryer oven on its own, it draws about 175 amps. So I grab my 300, new 300 watt solar panel on kick ass, and Keith had a 200 watt, so I paralleled them together, which gave me 450 watts. So I dropped the amps down, so I dropped the load down on the battery to 140 amps. So I thought, well, that's cool. That'll handle it. No problems at all. It's got a continuous of 150. Uh, luckily for my system that just monitors everything, including battery temperature, the whole works. About 17 minutes later, I went to go check, and the battery was at 78 degrees Celsius. 78. And the BMS actually cuts out at 80. So I quickly asked, I quickly asked this Keith, where's your nearest power point? And he showed me. So I grabbed the power lead, plugged it in, put boom, plugged it in, bang, put that in, and did the rest of the cooking using AC power. 
So, and it wasn't a real hot day, so that was interesting. I was drawing 140 amps, and after 15 minutes, that battery was getting too hot, and it was on the verge of almost shutting down. But their specs are saying that it will continuously do 150 amps. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on there. So, yeah. So here we go. Peak power output to peak draw 270 amps with a sustained output 175 amps for 5 minutes and 150 amps continuously. So, yeah. So, but it failed at 140 amps draw after 15 minutes. Because if I had to let it go any longer, as soon as that battery would have hit 80 degrees, it would have shut down the BMS. And that's it. It would have stopped then. And I've got no idea. you got to do some fancy stuff, power this or that, whatever, to wake that BMS up again. I saw some videos on it, and it looked complicated, and it's not a process I wanted to go through. So I won't be sticking to the iTech world. But for most of you guys out there, you have no problems running an inverter off it. I'm sure if you if you got an inverter that's you know drawing up to 1300 watts or whatever, um, I wouldn't go anything more than that. Uh, you'd be able to run off um, one of these single batteries, no problems at all, and you can run that Creatista Pro off a single battery if you do that trick that I showed you. If you watch that video I did last night and how to run it, because if you look at the specs. The watts on it, and you look at that sticker on that Creatista Pro, it actually says, if I recall something, about 2400 or 2800 watts it draws. Okay, but don't get confused at that. That's only if you've got both of those burners run at the same time. But if you watch that video I uploaded last night, it explains it all in there. Just watch that, and I'll show you how I brewed up a cappuccino just using that battery of no. With no solar panel, and with no generator running, I was easily able, and it only used up 3% of the battery capacity. It only dropped down by 3%, and I had a cappuccino made up in no time at all. So, you watch that video last night, it's all, it's all demoed in there. I went for a drive down to the Burnett River here. And I ran some tests there, and I filmed the whole lot, hence why the video goes for 40 minutes. Um, but I think it's well worthwhile watching. You'll see all this in action. So, it's, it's a good battery. But I think I need something that can easily sustain. I, I wouldn't mind. I want something that can sustain. Well, I'll tell you what I need. I need something that can sustain continuous 175 amp draw. So, something will do a 175 amp draw, uh, I, I think would be ideal. And I know that D, DCS 200 amp will do it, but boy, geez, isn't it expensive? That is one expensive battery. So, unless I can get a good deal on it, I'm just going to look at building my own. So... Yeah, I reckon minimum... I reckon you want a minimum 150 amps, what 24? Um, what can you run off 100 amps constant discharge? Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll be struggling to find an induction cooktop that'll do that. I don't think you'll find an air fryer that will do it. There's not, not a real lot out there. I think 150 amp minimum discharge, continuous discharge is what you'll need. 150 plus. You can get away with 150. I'm getting away with 150. By adding, particularly, I mean, my induction cooktop, no problems at all. It runs it without having to use a gen AC power or solar panels, it can handle that, no problems. It can handle that Creatista Pro, no problems at all. If you watch that video I did last night, it shows you there how to do it. 
so it can handle that, no problems. Um, with the air fryer oven that I've got, you'll then you'll need to run some additional input power to come in for that. But then if I get something, a battery that will can draw a minimum like 200 continuous, then I won't need to even run that. I could just cook off that air fryer oven without having an extra, you know, without having a AC power connected or without having a gen connected or without having solar panel connected. Um, and that's what I would like. That's what, how I'd like to run the system. I'd like to eventually have it so run so I don't have to need and only use those other devices for charging the battery. Not to run the item, just for charging. When I need the battery charge, I'll just then whack in the solar panel. Or if it's a rainy day or something, I can grab my little generator and plug it in under the awning and just charge that up in an hour's time. So, um, so that's all the, the idea is. And I reckon once I've got that, there'd be no problems at all. Um, I have an Amtron batteries. May have a better BMS. Amtron, I think they're the ones that uh, Andrew St. Pierre White uses, isn't it? And I believe that's what he's going to be putting into his new new system. If I recall, Amtron, are they those white blue ones? Yeah, it is. I think he's putting in two, I think, last I checked, Andrew St. Pierre is putting in two by 150 amp hour Amtron batteries, or unless he's changing from the Amtron. But what's the specs on the Amtrons? What's their continuous discharge? I'm just looking at the specs here now. Uh, just bear with me. I'm just seeing if it just says anywhere here. Rated voltage, charge voltage, depth of discharge, standard charge current 50 amps. Um, charging maximum, maximum continuous discharge, here we go. Maximum continuous discharge current is 100 amps. So it's, it's limited as well. Um, now do they make, do Amtron make these in 150 amps? Do they have 150 amps? Usually, when you're looking at 150 amp draw plus, you usually have to go for a 200 amp battery, but be wary. I've even seen some, a lot of 200 amp batteries starting to come out now that are limited to 100 amp discharge. And again, you won't be able to run. I mean, what's the point of having a 200 amp hour lithium if you cannot run I bring an induction cooktop on it because it's the BMS limits it so much that you can't draw any more than 100 amp out of it. What's the point of having all that 200 amps, all that power there, if you can't use it? It's just a waste of money. And I've seen I've seen 200 amps coming out like that. Um. So I don't know. Amtron make um trying to see. I know I said 12 hang on there we go they do okay they've got a 12 volt 150 amp hour and it's got a 175 amp hour continuous discharge cycle so that's cool but it's 1485 so that would be a that would be a really good battery um, so normally guys you need to go for the 200 amps um, otherwise you probably, if you only want a single 100 amp hour battery and try to do what I'm doing and try to get away with that, then you probably the only choice is the iTech World 120X. Um, that's the only one that can get close to it. They're all sold out too, those 150. This is probably what Andrew is going for, two of these. Um... But that's, that's got some nice specs on that. 
So, yeah, but there you're well above the 1400, 1485 then. But now at least you can run, you know, run air oven off them. You can run induction cooktops off them and so on. Um, so a lot of people are getting caught out with that. You really need to, here we go, Perth Pro actually sells the, oh, Perth Pro. Oh, well, Perth Pro sells them. I guarantee it. That's what Andrew's going into his new vehicle. And they actually got them a lot cheaper. They're thirteen ninety nine. Perth Pro. That's uh, I think that's the shop where Heinz works at. I think that's his shop, if I recall, in in Perth. Um, I think that's where Heinz business is. Uh, so yeah. So that that'll be nice. That'll be a nice battery. That's not that's not bad. Good figures for that price. Um, I might I might have to put that one into a consideration list. For myself, actually. Um, so it's 175. I would like 200. I would like 200. But 200 would be ideal for me. 175. I still probably would need to just plug in an extra solar panel in to make sure that it's it's all good. Uh, standard charge current, 30 amps. Ooh. Yeah, current charge rate's a bit low, eh? I probably wouldn't get it just for that reason. Optimum charge current rate's 30 amps. But most of, them, most of these 200, 150, 200 watts ones, if you look at the specs on the better ones, they're, they're up over 100 amps. You can charge them. Some are even 150, 200 amps. You can charge them right... So, and uh, I think that's why a lot of the cases, why these ones are cheaper, why the batteries are cheaper. I think they're saving money on the BMS. So I think the BMS are the more expensive ones that can handle these high discharges, these high charge rates. You'll find they've got a much better BMS, and that's and they're a much better system, and that's why they're costing more money, guys. So if you got the funds, you know, spend a few dollars and get a decent one. Uh, DCS has been one of the better ones out there in their 200 amp rate range, but you're looking $23, $2,400, but there's a reason why they cost that much. Um, see, that's throwing me off. 30 amps, and no way. I, I, I don't want to have anything that's going to have any less than 50 amp charge rate, so that's that's been ticked off my list, that one. <laughs> but then when you parallel them together, what does that mean? I mean, when you parallel them together, does it mean that it doubles that? So you need to find out. Um, connecting 3 by 100 amp slim lines. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. One stage I heard he was putting 3 by 200 Next thing I heard he's putting 2 by 150 And now you're saying he's putting 3 by 100 amp slim lines in. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. I'm going to monitor that and see which battery banks he goes for. So, because I want to update mine. Check out a channel called Brendan Tate. I'm going to write that down. He built his... Yeah, guys, it's not really that difficult to build your own. I actually have built lithium packs before. But this is back and back seven years ago when I used to fly the... the um, these big stunt helicopters, radar-controlled helicopters I used to be... I used to fly, I've still got a couple of them up here on the shelf, up here on the, on the top right. And I used to build the packs for them myself, and they're lithium cells, and these are big choppers. These are huge, even though they're radio controlled, they're humongous. They're something like two metres long. Blades are about four, two and a half metres wide, I think, or something. Um, 
The iTech World 200 amp hour seems to offer a 250 amp hour. You know, that's funny. The iTech World 200 amp hour. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. Before I ordered the battery, well, I was considering getting that iTech World 200 amp hour. And I kind of wish I did now in some ways because I don't think I'd have the issues I'm having now and I wouldn't need to worry about changing the battery. Um, but I rang the guys up. And, and for some reason, I don't know why, for what I'm doing, he, he didn't... He pushed me to the 120X. He talked me out of getting the 200 amp hour because I had a good deal. I could have bought the 200 amp hour for a really good price when they were having this super duper sale where there was a 20% discount code or something you could get. And I ended up picking the iTech World 120X up for $809 delivered here in Queensland. And two weeks after I bought it, it went up to fourteen ninety nine or something, <laughs> which is crazy. There's no way I would spend that much on that battery. I don't think it's worth it. But for eight hundred nine dollars, yeah, even at with the current sale price now, I think what is it nine ninety nine? I think it's worthwhile. But they didn't recommend their two hundred amp hour battery because he told me the 120X has got better sales on it that can handle more of the heat. And I think it's true, because it's got those prismatic cells. So they, I think the prismatic cells can tolerate more abuse. Um, so that's what he suggested over the 200 amp. So I didn't buy the 200 amp. But I see plenty of people with caravans with all this gear I've got to buy in these iTech World 200 amp hour batteries. So, I don't know, what are the specs of those? I haven't checked for a while. But it was one of the ones that I was... It was the one I was actually going to buy, to be honest. It was the one I was going to get until they talked me out of that one. Um... And that's what's on the phone when I spoke to him. See, they're, they're on sale now. See, they're eighteen ninety nine. See, eighteen ninety nine, Guys, I'd, I'd prefer to spend an extra $300, $400 and just go get the DCS. See, at the time, I could, I could have picked that up for, I think it was about 1300 It was on sale for with a 20% discount code off or something. Might have been 1400 um, so let's have a look. What's, what's the specs on it? Standard charge current, 100 amps. See, that's nice. Maximum charge current, 150 amps for five seconds. Um, what's the discharge? Standard discharge current, 250 amps. See, that's some pretty good figures there, eh? See, that probably, that, I think, it's probably the one I'm kicking myself. I didn't get that one at the time. I didn't buy it because they talked me out of it and told me to get the 120X being a better battery. And so they didn't, they did not recommend this one because the sales on it is not as good as the 120X. But I think this would have been good. But the most important thing is the BMS. This is, looks like it's got a much better BMS. That could have handled my system a lot better. So this is probably the one that I should have I should have got. But I wouldn't buy that at that price. If I was going to spend that much, I'd go and buy the DCS. I'm sure if I talk to the guys at DCS, I bet you they'll give me a better deal as well. I've never actually ever spoke to them. And, um, so let's have a look at the DCS. I mean, they sell, they sell a 100 amp hour battery as well. Now what's the specs? Maximum charge current, 100 amps. Well, how cool is that? See, 100 amps, you can charge that, just a single 100 amp hour. And maximum discharge current's 200 amps. See, even that would probably do with me. 
That's thirteen ninety nine. So guys, if you've got the funds, you're better off spend an extra three, four hundred dollars and, and get something that was going to you'd have no problems running. So here, yeah, guy, maybe this might be is all I need. Honestly, I don't think I need a 200 amp because I'm trying to keep the weight down as much as possible in my vehicle. That's part of the part of my build building process I'm doing here. Um, so it might be something like I didn't realise it had that much a high of a charge and discharge current. So that's pretty good specs on that. It's currently on sale for 13.99 and it's got a four year replacement warranty. Whereas I know if you go for the 200 amp hour, isn't it about five years or something? Oh, it's on special for 2349, so yeah, it's expensive, little sucker. <laughs> and what's its um, discharge rate? Maximum charge current 200 amps. Oh, how cool. Recommended charge current 140 amps. Uh, what's its discharge current? Doesn't give me this max the continuous discharge current. Just gives me a maximum discharge current of two fifty amps. So it's got a five year warranty. Tell you what, guys. Oh, I'm thinking maybe going for a single one hundred amp DCS might be the go. Oh, well, there you go. It's got the specs I need, and 100 amps I think is enough for me, what I'm doing. Interesting. There you go. Oh, well, any other comments? Yeah, it's true. How long have I been on for? An hour and a half, guys. How many have we got? We've got seven people on. Six thumbs up. Hey, <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, so we might call it. Hang on, excuse me. I'm just going to have a drink. Some interesting research there. Uh, might even change my plans and go for a single 100 amp DCS. Although for the same price of the single amp DCS, so actually even cheaper, I reckon I'll be able to build a 200 or a 300 amp um, lithium battery. So we'll see how I go, eh? But in regards to weight wise, what's certainly going to be the lightest is going to be the single 100 amp. And I'm running a single 100 amp. You could say I take well battery there and it seems to be doing the job. Um, amperage is not a problem. I've never had it go below 50%. Only once I had it go down to 50%. Most of the time I it goes down to about 40%, 30%. DCX Extreme 80 amp hour. Isn't that designed for inside the battery bonnet? DCX Extreme 80 amp hour. Where is that? Let me have a look at the specs on that. Oh yeah, that's um yeah, wow, 1650. Um I think this is for under bon bonnet use for winching ah uh, yes it is yes i did i have briefly heard about this is designed to be used under bonnet uh for winching um there's no doubt this thing will be an awesome battery i'm surprised it's only got a three year return to base warranty considering there are other cheaper ones that got a five year warranty um 
works between minus 25 to 85 degrees Celsius. Uh, let me see. Maximum charge current, 180 amp. Recommended charge current, 50 amps. So that's what you got to look at, the recommended. So it's got a maximum discharge current less than or equal to 250, but that's maximum. Does it give us a continuous? Not really, it doesn't say it. I, it can connect into series up to 48 volts. Wow, how much? Jeez, you'd have to connect four of these. That's four of these by $1,650 to get it to 48 volts. Wow, that would make it expensive battery. If you're going to do that, if you're going to spend that sort of money, you, you, buy, you just, go, just go for the Victron Lithiums. I think they're about the best out, the Victron Lithiums, if you're going to spend that sort of money. Um, but then the Victron Lithiums are not rated to use under the bonnet or for winching. So if you really want to save weight and you want to use it for winching this will be the one to go for but if you want to use it just to run an inverter and all that stuff i wouldn't i wouldn't spend that much money on a 80 amp hour to run an inverter or to run your fridge or to run an air fryer that is way way too much money particularly if only a three-year warranty so the only reason i would consider that is to run it under the bonnet as for the winch as it's designed and that's only if you really really need to save those what 20 30 kilos or whatever that you need to get out of your vehicle if you're just that desperate on saving that much weight um, but for the applications we are using for where well, I am there's no way I would consider that they've got another one here a DCS 12 volt 150 amp hour IP67 lithium <laughs> it's actually waterproof it's again it's $2,400 um, 150 amp hour it's probably be Ideal for the marine industries, for your yachts, exposed boats. If you've got a boat that's exposed to the elements, where you'd warrant to spending this kind of sort of money on these type of batteries. Uh, but then I'd just go for the Victron. I'd, I'd, if I'm doing that sort of budget for batteries, there'd be no, no hesitation. I'd go to the Victron Lithium. But interesting, it looks like a nice battery though. There's no doubt that. Um, what does my car weigh? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> it's certainly a lot lighter than it was before because I took a lot of stuff out, including the drawers and everything, and I've got lighter weight stuff in there, replaced them with. Took the AGM battery out. Um, any day now, I'm actually going to drive uptown and go to a way station and weigh it. So, I will be able to give you that answer very soon. In saying that, my vehicle does have a GVM upgrade. So, what you call them? GVM. I bought it with a G GVM upgrade done on it. Um, so, it can carry more weight. It can tow more than your regular Pajeros out there because of the GVM upgrade. I think it's got a three ton. I think I can tow a three ton caravan. And I think it's got a ball weight of 300 kilos. I can have a ball weight of 300 kilos because I read the, the certificate. 
that I've got with the vehicle for the GVM upgrade. It's 300 kilos, all weight, and 3 ton. Um, it's got a modified, they've actually modified it on the chassis. It's got a Heyman Reese towing system under it. And it's been modified, and they've modified the um, the chassis where it attaches to the chassis, as well as part of that GVM upgrade. I didn't know it had a GVM upgrade when I bought it. Just after I got home, after I picked it up, I looked through the papers, the documents, and I found the engineer certificate in it. So how's that for a bonus, guys? <laughs> hey, how's that for a bonus? So it's got suspension that's modified in it for the upgrade. So it's got it had really good suspension in it. I did have to replace the rear springs on it. And I went to the King's factory where they make the springs in Gold Coast. And actually got some springs custom made for the back to carry that weight. So it actually drives really good that vehicle. It's a nice beautiful drive vehicle to tour on on the highway. So FPV power on Facebook. Yes, I think FPV. That's in that guy. Isn't he a Chinese guy, isn't he? Or... or, or Whatever, and he's down in Melbourne. If he's the one, I have been watching his videos and following him. Um, so I think that's who it is. I've been looking through, probably if I'm going to make one, he's probably the one I'm going to go through. What's your car way with all this stuff? Yeah, you'd be surprised. It's actually a bit lighter than what I had before when I had the drawers in there. Because remember, I've got no drawers in there now. I took the drawers out. Um, that's why I'm making it lightweight. So, just say, what does your car weigh? Fully loaded camping gear, food, water, or yourself. Now what I'm going to do when I when I get this vehicle weighed, I'm going to take everything out except leave the bare what's you know necessary in the vehicle. You know, I could take all the water out. You know, empty the fridge, have the fridge that's empty, but leave the fridge in there. I just want a base weight of that. And then what I'm going to do, and this is the same principle I did when I used to be ultra lightweight bushwalking, height long distance bushwalks. Then once I got that base weight. Then I'm going to weigh all the other components that I have. That way I know what they weigh. Like I'm going to weigh the solar panels. I'm going to weigh the food that I put in, what each individual item is. I'm going to weigh like the water. I'm going to weigh all that. So then I know what the total weight of everything is inside a vehicle. Now the eye camper is gone. I sold, Daniel, I sold the eye camper a while back. I now have um, what's called a Bundu Tech Bundu Top electric rooftop tent. Uh, it's handmade from South Africa, and it is an awesome tent. It takes 20 seconds to set up. All I have to do is press the button, and 20 seconds later, it's set up. I just grab my ladder out the vehicle, hook the ladder on, climb in, go to bed. Bed's all made up. Bed, sheeting, everything in there. Not only is it stores all the bedding in there, I can store it in there. The bed's made up. Um, that's that's what I've got now, and they're from they're made in South Africa. Each individual one are handmade in South Africa. Much better than an eye camper. And to be honest, guys, it's around the same price as an eye camper. Biggest advantage you got with the eye camper is if you need that space. If you need a king size bed, you go for something like the eye camper. But honestly, guys, if you don't need a rooftop tent that size, 
don't buy the eye camper go buy this bunder tech bunder top rooftop tent for the same price as a eye camper it is a much better rooftop tent heaps better than the eye camper but in saying that the eye camper is still good it's just that the bunder tops are just that much better so much better quality gear quality components much better canvas on it than what the eye eye camper has got uv treated the whole works it's got everything that you would want already included it's got charging points it's got led lights it's even got two fans and they are included and it's also pre-wired for solar panel those who own the eye camper you'd be aware just how much the costs involved in getting power and lights put into your eye camper i spent as much as four hundred dollars just to get power and lights inside my eye camper when i bought that drifter lighting kit you don't need to do that with these bundy tops so yeah and also the bundle tops have got a very comfortable mattress in them the eye campers they're like a torture machine so then you've got to do away with the mattress and buy expensive self-inflating mattresses so it makes it a very expensive tent it makes it very expensive you've got to spend so much money on them to get them comfortable and then you've got the rigors of having to set up the beds every time you want to use it you've got to make your bed every time you want to pay you want to go away somewhere for a short drive you got two self-inflating mattresses that you've got to roll up and get all the air out then make the bed away and that it's just just drove me insane it's just it got to the point where I went camping that oh I'd like to go for a drive down there and have a look there and then you turn around look at the eye camp and you sit back nah nah and you just stayed at camp and now guys I just push a button and thing pops down and I can go away and leave it in 20 seconds so yeah much much better but it's not as big as an eye camper but if it's only two years just go get an eye camper guys just go get an just not the eye camper just go get a bundle top don't bother with the eye camper unless you need a king size it's the only reason i would tell someone to go for an eye camper is if you need a king size mattress but be wary the mattress that comes <laughs> literally mate <laughs> you got perfect thanks you just saved me some pain <laughs> mate the pain in your back and your pocket because <laughs> you wake up in the morning with those original mattresses <laughs> you'll wake up in the morning and you will have pain in your back you will have pain <laughs> as i found out and then you've got to buy these expensive self-inflating mattresses which is a pain to get all the air out my time oh just uh, no and to be honest they're not uv treated for our climate i've seen i've seen some that are less than a year old where they just lost their color and they hardly been used so the canvas it's like a poly cotton canvas you get like off a cheap tent so i don't think they're as good as what people rave on they are i owned one for a while and i've compared it with other rooftop tents and i've seen um mate bundle top man <laughs> um i just had a crack in my kids 50 millimeter swag mattress never again 
That's what they, that's, that's what an eye camper is, Daniel. There's no different. In fact, the mattress that comes with the eye camper is less than 50 mils. I kid you not. Or is it 45? I think it's 45, depend which one you get. They're different. Some are 55 mil, some are 45. So, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll be in the same boat with an eye camper, right? But only go for an eye camper if you need a king size. Their size is unbelievable. They're magnificent, their size. Um, just unbelievable. But budget in to replace the mattress with good quality self-inflating mattresses and be prepared the rigors of mucking around with that setting it up making your bed every time you want to go for away for a drive somewhere you got to pack it down and then set it up it makes it into quite a chore um it adds a long time so i don't recommend the eye campers anymore so i i sold mine off yeah so how many people we got on? Um, nine. Oh, cool. Most I've had was ten, I think. <laughs> so guys, well, an hour and 56 minutes. I wasn't planning on going on this long. <laughs> this is cool. Oh, one bit of benefit here. I just charged the battery on my good camera. I noticed it was, well, got it plugged into my, I'm using my good camera and it's plugged into my computer. And when I plugged it in, it started charging the battery, so I won't need to charge the battery for a while now. <laughs> oh, well, just in case you missed it, I don't think you would. Uh, check out the 10% off code I've got there. That kick-ass Australian directive given to me for, just for my watches. Whether you're subscribed or not subscribed, you're all eligible to use that code on anything store-wide on the Australian Direct Store, including the solar panels. So that save you 10% store-wide. You just got to put in that code AU Camper 10. So Australian Direct was kind enough to give me that code um, yesterday. So I went on here to do a short video to announce that code. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> you saved you some pain, and uh, mate, you might as well just stick to your swag. Save your money and just stick to your swag, mate. <laughs> it's no different comfort-wise. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, they're great. You've got to spend a lot of money to get them comfortable. Any discount on the bundle top? Uh, I don't have any discount codes on the bundle top. But I'll tell you what. If you live anywhere close to Brisbane Gold Coast, just go see the bundle top distributor. And I'm sure he will look after you. So, and he's got the, an awesome mob there that's just down the road from his distributorship from his business that will install it for you as well. And they're based at Gold Coast. And just near the... Harbour Town Shopping Centre, just down the road from there. Um, but there's no codes for them. But if you get a chance, uh, go check them out and go and lay in one and see how comfy they are. Uh, unlike these, I camper, where I had to spend many, many dollars to get that thing comfortable. I not spent one cent on that bundle top. 
not a single cent so in actual fact it's cheaper it works out cheaper and a lot cheaper than many other offerings out there because what you got to spend extra money on on the other rooftop tents this has got it included so they're brilliant they're brilliant love it love 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 it and it's not as heavy as it looks it's the same weight as the eye camper and it's not as bulky as it looks it's the same height as the eye camper although it doesn't taper and you'd be surprised you think it's just a big box sitting on top of the car and it's going to really affect your fuel economy it actually uses less fuel than what I've been recording when I was using the eye camper and that was interesting and I asked Ian the distributor, Ian the distributor I asked him I said one thing I'm surprised on the figure I seem to be using less fuel driving on the highway with this on the top than I did with the other two rooftop tents I tried including the wildlands I know it doesn't make sense but it does and he told me yep yeah, I can understand that he said you look at it you look at the bundle top smooth finish smooth around there's no nooks and crannies where the wind catches you look at a lot of the others the angle here angle there a big bar underneath here a big bar there this sticking out here all catches the wind and he says that ruins the aerodynamic of the vehicle and that's why a lot of people do get surprised on that feature that it doesn't just because because it's smooth it hasn't got as much where the wind catches and it kind of makes sense hence why it seems to use affects the drag less than what it does on the other two rooftop tents that I have tried on my vehicle so it's a very interesting figure very interesting that surprised me um, so yeah is the less fuel yeah I use less fuel driving on the highway with the bundle top on my Pajero than I did with the eye camper and the Wildlands rooftop tent even though that Wildlands rooftop tent on mine that I used was only 16 centimeters or whatever high I was going through more fuel on that than I did with the bundle top and I think it's because of all the bars underneath etc the way it was angled and so on no no not less fuel because of the weight of the car no I still had I still had the same gear in the car as I had with all those three rooftop tents it's only recently I've dropped the weight of the vehicle down further by putting in this new Victron outfit there um, yeah I've, I've tested the drifter one for me it wasn't it was was not for me I I I had one for a, for a month and it was a loaner but I did have the option to purchase it but I decided not to go for it I went for the bundle top and I think I made the right decision there now for the price the just the wildlands are awesome uh, fine if you're a young fella and you haven't got a bad back or sore back yeah go for it the wildlands it's fine nothing wrong with it but if you don't have a strong back and you've got a bit of a back issue you're going to have problems setting it up so yeah <laughs> practically <laughs> you can pick up probably be almost a half little decent second-hand camper trailer for the cost of an eye camper 
or a bounded top. Um, but then you got the hassles of carrying a trailer with you. If you go to Fraser, it's going to cost you more to go there on Fraser. It's going to be a hassle of parking. You got extra registration to pay. Um, many, many disadvantages over just having a vehicle that's with no trailer. So, I can't imagine going over the Fraser Island and then paying extra as much as already cost now and then having to pay extra to tow a trailer out and then having the rigours of towing a trailer and then the increase in the fuel consumption as well and the wear and tear on your vehicle. Yeah, no, it's not for me, guys. I want the rooftop tent. <laughs> And it gives me an awesome view when I look out the <laughs> windows. <laughs> so it's not because the less fuel because of the weight I dropped in the car. It's because I think you believe it's to do with the aerodynamics. Less wind resistance. I seem to have more wind resistance with the eye camp and the wildlands than I did with the bunt when than I do with the bunder top. So, yeah. With four kids, the trail is the only way to make it, yeah, or a eye, or a, um, eye camper. You'd fit four people, no problems up in the eye camper. Um, but a lot of people have no choice. You do have to use a trailer. But if there's only one of you two years travelling, um, I don't think you need a trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, or two cars, yep. What's your thoughts on the clamshell, rooftop tents, drift of wildlands or camp king industries? Yeah. I think I might have covered that. Keep up the good work. I'm in the process of rebuilding my 2017 Hilux install a wildlands rooftop tent on the Mitz Alloy Canopy. Nice, nice setup. About to start the canopy 12 volt. I've ordered an Egon DC hub. Tips. Yeah, tips. Don't listen to all the Facebook fatty daddies out there. The keyboard warriors. <laughs> they will hammer you if they find out you bought a DC hub. <laughs> Mate, those Egon DC hubs are awesome with a capital a they are brilliant it's going to save you money on cable runs it's going to save you money on join joining and all that the biggest tip i can tell you is don't make sure you don't accidentally put the positive on the negative and a negative on the positive so make sure you don't short it out uh, make sure you follow the papers, the instructions that come with it and use sufficient um, gauge wiring and that's it. As long as you put the positive in the positive, the negative in the negative, use the correct gauge wiring. Simple as setting those things up, simple as, they're brilliant. Oh, and get the um, the optional cage, the mount for it. It's worthwhile getting that mount. I got the mount for it. I think it's about $167 or something, but it's real quality built, stainless steel. And it's got a nice clear perspex over the front. Um, are there any cheaper alternatives to Egon, though? Mm, probably just your conventional way of mounting it all in I suppose just have a fuse box and run off that I don't think there's anything out there that's similar to the Egon DC hub um, keep up the good work it's you know Jeff oh yes Jeff uh, Jeff and Tash yeah I've, I've actually follow his YouTube channel 
And uh, yep, he's got the Bunda top and he loves it. Most people do. I don't think there's anyone out there I've met or heard of that do not like the Bunda top. Honestly, guys, I think you go get a Bunda top. I don't think you'll ever change it. I don't think you'll go back to anything else. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> They're that good. <laughs> they really are. In fact, they come in two colours in standard. There's a grey one, I think it's grey, and there's the olive green. And when I went to go order mine, they asked me a question. And I thought, this is a weird question, why? They asked me, do you like to sleep in the morning, or do you want to wake up at daybreak? I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind sleeping in the morning a bit when I'm camping. And then they said, go for the green. Even though both of them are the same canvas, okay, so they use their own South African canvas, which is called a rip block, something like that. So it's UV treated and everything, because as you wear, South Africa is pretty similar climate to what we get with the high UV and so on. So it's got, like we have the real good canvas here, they manufacture their own canvas, which is called that rip block with the UV treated and it's very heavy duty and the green is really dark it doesn't let any light in whereas the grey one even though it's the same canvas same weight but it seems to let more light in so it's more brighter inside whereas the green one when you close it all up all the four walls even during the day you've got to turn the LED light on it's that dark inside so it's awesome for sleeping in guys it really is good and it's a beautiful color too so and the outside you can actually get whatever color you want virtually but i think standard is white or black i went to black because that's what they had at the time i could get but otherwise i would have liked to have gone for the white one but a lot of people as actually when you mentioned jeff jaffa Jeff, Jeff and Tash Adventures, isn't that Jaffa or whatever, Jeff and Tash Adventure? I think it was at Jaffa Adventures. I think one of them actually repainted, got it repainted to match the colour of their vehicle. Is there any issues with the bunder in heavy rain or bad weather? No, not at all. No issue whatsoever. Fully 100% waterproof. And there's no noise. If the wind blows a gale, there's no noise. Even though they got that awning that goes around the side, it's rigid enough not to make any noise. So you don't get any noise. I found with the eye camper there was a heap of noise. There was a lot of noise. Um, but not with this one. The only issue I've had with the Bundu top only issue okay now if you if you put like most people do they put a household full-size ideal to put a full-size household high voltage solar panel on the top okay the way it's designed the way it's made the roof it's very flat so you're camping somewhere that's really flat and the way that and it's raining you'll tend to get a little you will get a little bit of water to sit on the roof if it's real flat and what happens is the ladder the ladder that comes with it is designed in such a way that it doesn't lock like your conventional chinese ones or your eye camper when you extend them out and then bang you can lock them in and push them down and it locks out that so what happens is it's just like an extension ladder, okay? It just extends out. So as you're climbing up, if it's raining, it's wet, and then you're climbing in, you're going in, you're getting in the, you know, as, as quick as you can. So you climb up, then you get halfway. As soon as you take your step and you put your weight on the top part of the ladder, then the vehicle's, not the bottom ladder's not getting that weight on the ground. The whole vehicle's supporting your weight, so your vehicle will then tip over. Well, guess where that water's going to go? <laughs> you guessed it. As I found out the first time I camped in it in the rain. Oh, whoosh. 
Soaking wet. Oh, no, I'm not saying soaking wet, but I was wet down my back. Okay? Because it's got the awn in there, but I was still far enough away, so... Yeah. But my recommendation is they got an optional little side awning that you can purchase. Easy to fit on. So it's like a normal four drive awning that's rolled up. So it attaches to with the with those sail rails, you know, those little sail rails with the grooves. You you pop rivet that onto the the top part of the or uh, just on the top corner of the um, bundle top. And then it's got this really quick setting up awning that goes out the front. And it covers that whole entranceway. So if water, so when you're getting in and out, you've got a dry area there. And it also comes with walls, but you don't have to use the walls if you don't want to. Now, I don't have that set up yet, but I'm going to get it. And what it does is also makes it ideal for put your toilet or your shower. You can have it as a shower room, so it fully encloses it as well. But if you don't want it, you don't have to put the wall. But it's set up in such a way that it's really quick. Go, go check out, do a YouTube search and check it out. This optional awning that goes off the side. And see how quick it is to set up. Um, that rectifies that issue. Otherwise, you want to just make sure that there's no water <laughs> on the roof when you get in. Or if you just go and replace the ladder with one of those Chinese ones that locks in so it doesn't lean over, put your weight on the vehicle and the water comes down, that will rectify that issue as well. That's the only problem. <laughs> Funny one at that, because I got quite relatively wet that night. <laughs> so that's the only issue. Um... Any other questions, guys? Seven people on. Uh, there's other cheap alternatives to Egon, though. Yep, I don't think there is. There's only there's only one type of item that's a that's a Egon, and that's the Egon itself. Um, yeah, it is it is pricey, but it's built quality, and it will save you money on runs, cable runs, on 12 volt. And it will where it will save you money is if um, you're not very good at installing your own 12 volt system and then you've got to take it somewhere uptown and pay a lot of money to get someone to do it and then a lot of them don't do it properly anyway. So it, it, it makes it simplifies it so you can install your own 12 volt system in it. As long as you know how to put a positive into a positive and a negative into a negative, so you know which is which, and make sure you get the right cable gauge, you'll have no problem setting them up. You don't need to spend a fortune and get an electrician, auto electrician, that you're not sure if he'll do the proper job anyway. A lot of them out there take shortcuts and don't do a proper job particularly if you get a cheaper quote to get it done. Um, and that's where it can actually save you money. There. So, had a rooftop tent, ended up picking up a second-hand MDC rear fold. Cape York, pretty much new, used four times, 8,500. We'll never go back to rooftops. Yep. Oh, well, there you go, yep. Yeah. So... No doubt one day I will end up with something like that, but not for a while. Not while I can still able to climb up and down the ladder. I'm going to stick to a rooftop tent. <laughs> when it comes to a day I can't do that, then I'll have to look at changing something. But then probably what I'll do is get a little trailer and whack the bundle top on it. How cool, a lot of people have done that. Put a bundle top on your little camper trailers. Heaps of people doing that. Yeah.
Chief, I've turned... Yep, I ordered the mount. Yep, cool. Excellent. Received the unit. Looks really well built. Yep, that's why I got it. Do the install myself. Enjoy your down-to-earth approach with content. Excellent. Yeah, it makes it simplified it a lot. Particularly with your DC-DC. It makes it really easy to mount because you can mount your DC-DC charger into it as well. And if you've got the twin ARB compressor, you can actually mount that through it as well. So you don't have to run it. As long as you've got a battery system, like a lithium or something that can handle the discharge of uh, DC-DC, um, then you won't need to sit there with the car running while you're pumping your tyres up. Although the ARB twin compressor, <laughs> it doesn't take long to pump your tyres up. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is huge, but you can actually uh, install. You'll see there's this on the top left where you can actually mount up to an 80 amp plug. In that, uh, you can power your twin ARB compressors through that top, the high, the highest on top left. Um, and you can even plug a inverter of up to, I believe. 600 or 700 watts maximum up on there. That's all it, it will it will handle um, But otherwise you inverter you otherwise anything above the six or seven hundred watts then you need to go straight through to your battery Which is what I've done in my system although it goes through the the negative goes through the shunt the Victron BMB712 shunt. Um, and then the positive goes straight to the lithium battery and not going through the DC hub because the DC hub uh, cannot handle that sort of draw coming in and out. It'll handle, it will handle 150 amps though. The whole unit, it'll handle up to 150 amps. Uh, that's the max. So. And it's got a lot of safety features built into it too. So those, those little fuses, we see those red lights. When if the fuse blows, those, those red lights will light up. So you can quickly, easy, just take a glance and see, oh yeah, that fuse is blown. Pull the fuse out, put it back in, and that red light should then go out. So it makes it very quick fault finding as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have no doubt those camper trailers would be nice. I mean, I still wouldn't mind owning one. I don't think I'd ever take it some of the places I'd go, though, like Fraser Island. Uh, but I prefer the rooftop tent, for sure. Loving it. I think it's brilliant. One day, if I start finding it's too high for me to climb up and down the ladder, then I'll get a little camper trailer and whack that on top of the camper trailer. So, alright, hang on, what have we got here? Cool. Heat sent a... So, guys, I might, um, I might knock off now unless anyone's else got any other further questions. I'm getting a bit thirsty. Hang on, just grab a drink. Should do more of these live feeds from now on, eh? What do you think? Seven people watching. <laughs> oh, well, it's still worthwhile doing, eh? <laughs> okay, guys, there's about a 30 second delay here, so in in the next 30 seconds, if there's no other extra questions, then I will log off. And um, check out the video I posted last night at midnight on that Creatista Pro. So I'll just wait. Give it a little bit longer.
There we go. Yep, went with the Nitec World 200 amp hour lithium and 2000 watt inverter along with the Red Arc Manager 30. Sweet. Really need a portable solar panel. Cool, nice setup. You'll have no problems running the induction cooktop on that one. Excellent. No worries, Watto. Is it Watto24? That's a cool name. Lady Smurf. <laughs> That's cool. Excellent. Yeah, good stuff. So, yeah, let me know how you get along with the Econ DC Hub. I think you'll have no problems with it. It simplifies the setup. And, um, man, has it made it cheaper with the cable runs. I was amazed how much cable I actually managed to get out of my vehicle when I installed that Egon DC Hub. Just incredible. So I think a lot of people don't realise that. And it saves a lot on expensive crimp joints and everything as well. So there's just, and there's less joins to have as well, I've found. There's less joins. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Excellent. Yep. Oh, I'll do this again one other time, eh? And I'll probably give, um, probably pick a more appropriate time next time. At night or on a weekend, maybe a weekend, Saturday or Sunday morning, see how I go. Should um, do a live feed then, maybe Sunday morning. That'll be the last day of this Win the Kick Ass 200 watt super thin solar panel. I believe midnight Sunday the competition ends, so get in there and uh, put your name on that and get a chance to win that solar panel. So, till next time. Thanks for watching, eh? See yous. <laughs> Bye.